Ed Heinz and I are sitting here at a table where our team, our researchers, have been clipping out of the Globe and Mail, the New York Times, uh, the, uh, the National Post, newspaper clippings about Israel and what's going on just in the last few days in media coverage. And it is a reminder as to how really relevant and fresh and hot off the presses your book is here. We call it Target Israel. We want you to get this book. Let's get to know Ed Hines a little bit more and what he has to say. We've been talking in recent conversations about Armageddon. We've talked about the false prophet, the Antichrist. There's uh, another cast of characters that are in the book of Revelation called the Two Witnesses. I think it's Revelation chapter 11. Tell us about these two figures. Uh, they are mysterious and perhaps yet not so mysterious. Yeah, they sort of jump out of the story and surprise everybody. And a lot of people don't even know about them. Uh, two Jewish leaders, obviously, in the context of Revelation 11, uh, that are uh, preaching the gospel to the people of Israel, I think, after the time of the rapture of the church. I think they realize, hey, we've been left behind. Let's not kid ourselves. We know what the New Testament says. Maybe we didn't believe it before, but we sure do now. And for three and a half years, they are preaching the truth to their own people in the city of Jerusalem. Well, that has to be a future prophecy of what is yet to come in the future. And at the middle of that tribulation period, the Antichrist, the beast, has them killed and executed. They're lying dead in the street of Jerusalem for three and a half days. Uh, and uh, when we look at the description of them, uh, they sound a lot like Moses and Elijah. Now, whether it's literally them or somebody in the spirit and type of them, they turn the water into blood. They call down fire from heaven. That's what Moses and Elijah, Elijah did. did. Yeah. And Moses and Elijah were the two witnesses that appeared with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. But then the shock comes after three and a half days, it says the Spirit of God came into them, they're resurrected, they stand up on their feet, and then they are raptured up to heaven. I'd love to be watching the secular media on that day. We're here in Jerusalem with the cameras, and the two guys are still dead. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They're moving around, they're getting up, they're going up. What in the world? Now, That's, why would yeah. God <laughs> do a mini rapture in the middle of the tribulation period? I think because of His love and mercy and grace. To let people know that what had happened earlier can't be explained away. This is not some alien abduction or they just went into another dimension. That literally was the rapture and I'm gonna let you see one here to help you understand that. Uh, you have at least seven raptures throughout the Bible. Enoch walked with God and he was gone. Right. Uh, Elijah was raptured up alive in the chariot of fire. So that's two in the Old Testament. Uh, you've got the two witnesses here that are raptured up. Uh, and you have the apostle Paul saying, I was caught up. It's the same word for the rapture into the third heaven temporarily. Philip was raptured up temporarily after he baptized yeah. the Ethiopian eunuch. Translated and, another place. And even the ascension of Jesus in Revelation oh, 12 cool. yeah. is called a harpazo, the Greek word for rapture. rapture. So you have <laughs> all this in the Bible shouting to us, it's happened before, it will happen again. And the last time we see are the two witnesses taken to heaven to say to the people of Israel, I love you and I did this for you. It's the risen Christ shouting to us with the nail prints down through time that I died for your sins, I gave my life for you, I shed my blood for you, and real salvation can come through what I've provided for you. That kind of excitement, that kind of passion based on biblical reality is in this book, Target Israel by Tim LaHaye, and you just heard him, Dr. Ed Heinsohn. I've been following Dr. Heinsohn for 35 years, and I tell you what, it just gets richer and richer every time I have an opportunity to sit at his feet. This book will help you. It'll help you. It's not, it's not written, they tell us, uh, to, to, to scare us because there's some scary things in here, but it's written to prepare us, to know what to expect in the future as we look forward to seeing Jesus as he is. We'll read this and say, come quickly, Lord Jesus.